Good morning. Uh, welcome to First United Methodist Church of Fort Lauderdale. A warm welcome to everyone worshiping with us here on, and in the sanctuary and to those of you who are worshiping online. Now you could be anywhere else this morning, but you chose to be here and that's beautiful. My name is Sharon Dove and I am on staff here at First United Methodist Church and um, Pastor Jill is recuperating from illness and so our worship and music director, Ben Rose, will be bringing us the message today. Just a few highlights that are happening here at first. So the lily plant is associated with Easter and for some it represents transformation and rebirth. During the Easter season, some churches use the plant to decorate their sanctuary and we are doing the same. So we can purchase a lily by completing one of these forms. They are in the narthex area just as you walk in and you can put your form along with your payment in the envelope marked Lily and drop it in the wooden pew, the wooden pedestals that are on either side of the entrance to the sanctuary. Um, I also want to mention that we do have a nursery with a qualified teacher, so um, you can bring your little ones. We would love, love, love to have them. Uh, Bible study was with Lindsay on Tuesday evenings at 5.30, Lindsay Payne, and on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. with Pastor Jill, and both are online. Please note that on April 14th, Monday, Thursday, the Music and Arts Department will present a moving and artistic musical titled Shadow of the Cross. It's a contemporary tenebrae service arranged and composed by Lloyd Larson and features a gorgeous instrumental ensemble comprised of the flute, the oboe, French horn, cello, and the piano our First United Methodist Church Choir, and the First United Methodist Men's Church Chorus. To complement the musical will be the lighting and extinguishing of candles and the ceremonial stripping of the altar. I know you don't want to miss this, so please, please come out and join us for a wonderful evening. There will also be um, a supper beginning at 5.45 p.m., your choice of vegetable or chicken soup with dinner rolls, and the musical begins in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Let us now center our hearts and minds as we begin our worship with two hymns, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, followed by Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. You may stand. Thank you.
Let us remain standing and affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. seated. We now have a special Tenebrae musical preview from our First United Methodist Men's Choir, Lamb of God. Good morning. So today's musical preview is uh, one of our contemporary pieces. Our men's choir will be singing this in our musical coming up. It's called Lamb of God. And last week we heard from our chancel choir a contemporary piece called You Are My All in All. Today is Lamb of God. And next Sunday, April 3rd, our choir will be presenting a, a gorgeous ballad called When You Prayed Beneath the Trees. There are nine numbers in this musical, so you will have heard three of them by next week. And there are also many traditional hymns that are included in the musical with opportunities for you to join us and sing in praise as well. So now our men's chorus would like to present Lamb of God.
Hello again. Um, so it's, it's my honor to be your uh, music and worship arts director here going on three years now. And I am so um, happy to be asked to spread the message today on behalf of Pastor Jill. And Pastor Jill, I know you're watching. I know you're out there. So thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to our wonderful musicians and our men's choir today. So for our scriptures today, I'd like to begin with the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 38 through 50. We all know it. We've all heard it before. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So... He took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked at David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands." And as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it, and he struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Our next reading is from 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 18 through 26. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant and this decree, sovereign Lord, is for a mere human. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, sovereign Lord. For the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth that God went out to redeem as a people for himself and to make a name for himself and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations and their gods from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt? You have established your people Israel as your very own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord God, Keep forever the promise you have made concerning your servant and this house. Do as you promised so that your name will be great forever. And then people will say, the Lord Almighty is God over Israel. And the house of your servant David will be established in your sight. And now I would invite you to recite with me. I'm sure some of you have it memorized. But the gorgeous Psalm of David Psalm 23. Please recite it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather in your house. May your word come through this message today and bless all whom seek to hear it. Amen. Well, during our Heroes of Faith sermon series throughout the past few weeks, we've learned about Joseph and Moses, Joshua, Ruth, and last week, Sarah. So today, I'll be speaking on another faith hero, David, and how he was really a game changer for modern worship as we know it today. From his earliest days, David had a very special and intimate relationship with God that he uniquely expressed through music and poetry. We have David to thank for the evolution of worship from animal sacrifice and high priest ritual to a celebration with music, procession, dance, and overall just great joy. We want church to be a place where you can come and be happy and celebrate and praise God. I would like to invite my colleague, he's a familiar face here at the church, he sings with our choirs and he plays trumpet and he is a good friend of mine, Christian Dorsey, I would like to invite him up to showcase the art of a short spoken word piece. It's a beautiful poetic form of praise that is used to praise God. And I'm thankful that he shared that with us today. Christian. Good morning. Um, thank you again for the opportunity. Once again, to a friend and a colleague. Um, so this, this short piece, is a reflective poem and is simply called The Loser's Choice. Failed relationship runs deep. Stems from my parents' divorce, Adam and Eve. Humanity driven off course by a single choice, they failed to see it through. I don't condemn them though, still they rise. But this isn't the typical redemptive story. No, they don't get back together, though they realize they should. They found their one, but now they are bound to the present, asking the question of what could have been. So when I came across the question of what will I do, desperate from the knowledge and seeing what happens when you give up, I did all I could to see us make up. But still you left me, dazed and confused. No, I wasn't perfect, but in, in my effort to do all I could, I was left with no answer. That hurt more than any cross because in my pride, I was willing to pay any cost, never once considering that it takes two to pull through, both on one accord. That's the scary part about love, the fact that each one has choice. And then there's the beauty of it, that no matter who or what you choose, you will always be God's first choice, unconditionally yours. Now, it may seem a little off topic, but I, I chose that when presented with this opportunity because I don't know if we realize, but we spend most of our lives, whether it's something from when we were younger or throughout life, seeking approval, seeking to express, seeking to be welcomed, seeking to be loved, right? And we express that through the way we dress, the way we speak, the jobs we do, the things we say. And what I just really want you guys to get from this is that beyond any of that, I hope that you choose to to respond, that you make the choice to love in response to the fact that God chose you. You don't have to do anything to choose that, to be chosen. You don't have to do anything to receive that. I just pray that you receive it just like David did at a young, early age. He dealt with loneliness. He was the forgotten son. He was by himself a lot. But he's able to speak and praise and worship and joy because he received and chose to love back. May we all learn to worship 
walk and live in a way that's beautiful and about our response and the love of God. Thank you. Thank you. So in case you didn't know, King David wrote at least 70 or 75 psalms. As a young boy, David began to shepherd his father's sheep flocks and saw in his own expectations and role of shepherd the role God plays in our lives. A shepherd guides, leads the flock to grassy green fields, helps the animals rest, protects them from their predators, David's psalms were musical poetry that expressed gratitude and honest prayer concerns in worshipful form. Remember our first opening hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us? Gorgeous tune. Verse 1, we sang of Christ in his role as shepherd, a guide, a leader to all. The last verse we sang reminds us to love Christ and praise God from a young age, from birth through Sunday school, baptism, and beyond. It doesn't just stop when you graduate high school and you're done with Sunday school. It should keep going. Proving that the love of God be shown through us. That God's love will always be present, just as he always loved us. Now, the prophet Samuel, whom we heard from in our scriptures this morning, he was called upon by God to find and bless the future king of Israel to replace Saul. Samuel tells Saul that he has lost his place because of his dishonorable choices, and God has someone in mind to replace him, who is a man made after God's own heart. Samuel knew this meant a young man of faith with an intimate relationship with God who could wisely lead Israel. And there's that word again, lead. He was not aware that it was a young shepherd boy until he was led to inquire into the sons of Jesse. And we know, probably from Sunday school or vacation Bible school, the famous story of David and Goliath, when David bravely faces a battle, not with Saul's armor offered to him, but with faith and shepherd tools, a slingshot, five smooth stones, It only took one of those stones and trust that the battle belonged to God. This, of course, was our first scripture reading this morning. And another one of David's most famous prayers is this. Who am I, God, and who is my family that you have chosen to reveal yourself through us? He knows that the Messiah will one day come from the house of Judah, and the line of David will extend into the future with God's chosen Redeemer. And David also writes, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And that's Psalm 51. His psalm becomes the formula that we use to this day for our prayers of confession of sin and pardon in worship. We say the Apostles' Creed. He knew God's heart was loving and good, and he trusted that God was a forgiving God. We all have much to appreciate about David's story, folks. God doesn't choose perfect people. He chooses faithful people. God revealed his idea of worship was more than sacrifice and how he wants our delight and our joy evident through music and praise. Joy, faith, can be expressed countless ways. We... Here at FUMC, my shameless plug to my wonderful music department, our beautiful orchestra plays each week hymns, accompaniments, special music, praise songs, even at times written or arranged by some of our own musicians. Our church has a wonderful choir that's dedicated to singing the word of God and expressing their love through soaring melodies. Hopefully they're soaring (laughs) in the right way. And... Even our handbell choir, yeah, remember them, the dinglings. We have plans to bring them back. We need volunteers. But our handbell choir offered a very unique form of praise and worship. God's work and God's word is alive through worship and praise, everybody. Christian's reflection in spoken word is another beautiful way to worship God. 
and it's all about how you receive it and give it back. We have David to thank for this. David's line brought forth Jesus exactly a thousand years later. Before I close, I want to remind you what Samuel says about David in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Ain't that the truth? What we focus on makes a difference. David showed us God's heart through his poetry and through his music, forever changing the game of worship within our living and loving church. Being Methodists, and yes, I am an associate Methodist, even though I was raised Baptist, um, I guess you can say Methodists are known for three things. We eat, we pray, and we sing. So to close this message today, I want to do something a little out of the ordinary. I want you to take a look and pick up your blue United Methodist hymnal that's in front of you in the pew back. Some of you know where I'm headed with this. Let's end with a good old-fashioned hymn sing. We're going to shout out four of your favorite hymns. Sorry, that's all we have time for. Maybe in the future we'll have a whole evening of supper and, and songs. But today, let's choose four hymns. And our guest organist and accompanist today, Mr. Carlo Catrone, he'll be, uh, he'll be playing our hymns for us. We'll sing just the first verse of, of your favorite hymns. And we'll end the fifth hymn with our song of reflection. So, somebody shout out a hymn number or a name. 593. 593. Oh, gorgeous. Here I am, Lord. I was listening to that this morning on the way here, recorded by the Celebrant Singers. Beautiful. All right, Mr. Carlo. <laughs> Another one, 420. Breathe on me, breath of God. Beautiful. Next, shout them out. Uh-oh. 302? You're next. Oh, Mighty Fortress. Let's do 302 and then Mighty, Mighty Fortress. All right, 302. Where is that? Oh, 
Yeah, you know, our Methodist founder, um, Charles Wesley, his, his brother um, John, they wrote thousands of hymns, and this is one of them. And of course, we get to sing it in just a few weeks on Easter Sunday. Christ the Lord is risen today. enjoy that little hymn sing. It's so great for me to stand here because I can hear you. <laughs> and let's close our hymn sing and our sermon today with our song of reflection, Blessed Assurance. You can put your hymnals away. And the reason we use, just in case you're wondering, sometimes I get asked why we don't use the hymnals. Our orchestra plays from a beautiful hymnal called the Celebration Hymnal. It has all of our Methodist hymns but they sometimes have different lyrics or ones that suit our message that day. So we put those lyrics on the screen. That way you're not confused and wondering why are, are they going rogue and just singing whatever they want. Okay. Blessed Assurance. <laughs> time of prayer this morning, I invite you, once I say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to reply with, hear our prayers. And let us bow our heads and go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for leading us, loving us, even giving up your life so that we might be restored to an intimate, everlasting fellowship with you, our creator. Because you are our shepherd, our protector, our defender, we desire to share some of our needs with you. 
Lord, listen to each of our hearts as we take this moment to silently or verbally share our most personal needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, help us in the growth process of our spirituality. Increase our own appreciation of who you are, how you love all humankind, not just us or even those like us. Impress us that like you, we can love those who are very different from ourselves, those whose skin is a different color or those whose culture and even values are different from ours, those whose religious convictions are different from ours and those whose economic level are far below or far above ours. Because you love all, we ask that you help the oppressed of the earth, the victims of hunger, the victims of racial discrimination, and those whose individual freedoms are prohibited by forces which initiate great injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us more sensitive to you and to one another, more conscious. Bring us to both humility and boldness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Shepherd us in our own spiritual journey, Lord. Give us the courage to be merciful, the endurance to be faithful to those in our care, just as you are with each of us. It is in the name of the one true and everlasting God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we pray together the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as we sing together one of the greatest hymns of faith ever written, two verses of Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please rise.
today, and we invite you to join us for coffee and fellowship in the parlor just around the corner. Hear today's benediction sent to me from a very special and wise friend, and that friend knows who they are. We're going to put it on the screen here. David didn't submit a resume, but God told Samuel about him. May God mention you, my friends, to someone who will lift you up. We'll close by singing a congregational amen, tradition in, our, in my Baptist church I grew up in. Carlo will play it once, and then I'll lead it so we may sing it together. The words are very simple, amen. God bless you.